so kind. We thank you for loving us, God, and sending your dear son, Jesus. And we thank you for the life that he gave, the blood that he shed. And we thank you for him rising again with all power in his hand. God, we thank you today. And we ask now, God, that you be with us. Word our mouth, God. Give us what to say. Help us to say it according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. thank God for being so good and so merciful and so kind. I thank him for another day that he blessed me to see. I thank him for the new mercies that he has for me today. And I thank God uh, also for the revival. And my night was Friday night also. <laughs> God blessed me on Friday night. And I thank God for that. Um, you know, he didn't let it close out. We got right to the end and he just came in and just just overshadowed us. He didn't let it close out. So, you know, whatever we needed from him, it was here. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for um, his word. And I thank God for him talking to me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's a mighty good God. Yes, he is. And I thank God uh, for the song Brother John sung. I'm nothing without him. I thank God for him. I want him to live in me, breathe in me, breathe through me, use me. Hallelujah. I'm his. I'm his servant. I'm his vessel. And I want to be used by him. He's a mighty good God. And uh, I'm, I'm going to come to you from the 15th chapter of John. I'm, I want to first give honor to, to God and give honor to our pastor. Uh, Melissa Green, his wife, missionary deacon brothers, and everybody in the house. Yeah. I thank God uh, for being so good. You know, and I thank God uh, for my uh, the pastor, my husband. I thank God for him. And I thank God for all the wonderful things he does yeah. in our lives. I thank him. I was thinking about our marriage. I say, Lord, I know it's nobody but you. Yeah. 30 years, it, it, nobody but God. Because when we started off, it was really rough. We didn't know how to get along with one another. And by all predictions, we, wouldn't have, we shouldn't have last three years. <laughs> but God is a mighty good God. We last 30 years, and we're still there. And I thank God for that. I thank God. It's, it's all in when you have a mind to do what's right. You want to do right just want to do right. God going to help us do right. Yes, he is. And I want to talk to you from the 15th chapter of uh, St. John, starting at the first verse. And I, I said, I was thinking this way. I said, God was talking to me. And uh, you can eavesdrop in on it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. And uh, the first verse, he says, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He said, I am the true vine. Genuine. Yeah. Real. I'm the real source. Yeah. The vine is the source. Yeah. And you don't have to go nowhere else and look to nothing else. Yeah. Just to Jesus. Yeah. This is Jesus talking. He said, I am the true vine. And in this book of John, he said, I am more than just that. He, 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 was, he was getting his disciples ready because he was getting ready to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. And we know when the Garden of Gethsemane, they came and, got, and arrested him. Yeah. They got him out of there. And he went to the cross. This was a horrific thing yeah. that his disciples were getting ready to face. Yeah. And they weren't prepared for it. Yeah. So God, Jesus was getting them ready. He was telling them, all the things that were going to happen, yeah. and and some of it they could hear, and some of it they couldn't hear, yeah. and uh, but that was all right. He gave them the word. That's the most important thing. If he had never said it, they wouldn't have had nothing to hold them right. to keep them. And I thank God that this word is on record for us today, because we go through a lot of things.
we face a lot of things, but we just get in his word. He'll show it to us. He'll bring it out. He'll open up our understanding. He'll help us through that tight situation. He'll help us through that stressful situation. He will help us through. He's a mighty good God. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm the true vine. You ain't got to go no further. He was telling his brothers, just remember me. Yeah. Remember what I said. Don't look to nothing else. Yeah. It's going to get hard on yeah. you. Yes, it is. Yeah. You're going to get afraid. Yeah. You're going to hide. Yeah. But just hold on yeah. to me. Just know that you, you've you already experienced. There were many more that had come before Jesus came. But they didn't last. They weren't real. They yeah. were soon over with. That's why he told us don't fret yourself. Yeah. Because of evil doers. And you don't have to worry yourself about the false prophets yeah. because they're going to be brought to naught. Yeah. Yes, he is. He just don't want us to be deceived. Yeah. So he said, I am the true vine, yeah. and my father is the husbandman. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I, he said, I am genuine, and I'm, real, I'm the real source. Yeah. I am the connection you need to the Father yeah. in heaven. Yeah. Jesus offers eternal life, yeah. and outside of him is nothing but death. Yeah. That's the only choice we got, yeah. life and death. Yeah. And we choose him, we got life. In, in John, the 14th chapter, in the sixth verse, Jesus said unto him, says unto him, I am the way, yeah. the truth, and the life. Yeah. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There were some people in his days that didn't want to receive him. Yeah. But he's letting Nicodemus know here that there is no other way. I am the way. Yeah. I'm the truth yeah. and the life. If you want life, you got to receive Jesus. Yeah. He said, no man, nobody can get to the Father except through him. And even though he said this over 2,000 years ago, people still don't believe and trying to go some other way. Amen. But as there is no other way. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Acts the fourth chapter, in the twelfth verse, he said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given un 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 among men whereby we must be saved. No other, no other. Salvation comes through Jesus only. Yeah. But there's none other name. No other name you can call on. He gave us that name. Yeah. Aren't we glad for the name of Jesus? We have that name. Sometimes the situation can get so tough. It can get so hard. And all we can say is, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I remember one time I was at work and the lady was trying to tell me, you got to say uh, certain words. You got to pray right. You got to say this and say that. I said, uh-uh. I know I ain't got to do nothing but call on the name of yeah. Jesus. Some, you don't have time to think of what to say. Yeah. Just call on the name of yeah. Jesus. That's the kind of God we serve. Yeah. He already know. Yeah. He, he knew you were going to get there before you got yeah. there. So just call on him. Yeah. That's all he want. In 1 Timothy 2 and 5, he said, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, yeah. the man. Christ Jesus. Nobody else can go between us and God. Yeah. He was the one. Yeah. He's the only one. Yeah. So ain't no need of us. Don't get weary. Yeah. Things get hard. Yeah. Problems come up. Yeah. And then we want to turn loose Jesus and try to seek something Amen. else. No. Call on him first. Yeah. Seek him first. And let him tell us what to do. Yeah. Let him tell us which way to go. Yeah. When I have a problem and I don't know what to do with it. And I know I, if I go and do something I'm going to mess it up. Yeah. I just say, God, I need you. Yeah. Now, I need you to do something. Because yeah. if you don't do it, it, can't, it ain't going to get done. Yeah. And I friend, he ain't never failed me. Never failed yeah. me. And I thank God for that. Yeah. The vine grows out of the soil. And the branches grow out of the vine. Yeah. So we are the branches. Yeah. And we're, yeah. our source is coming from the vine. Yeah. Jesus said, I'm the true vine. Yeah. He's my source. Yeah. He's my real source. Yeah. Yeah. In that second, second verse, he said, Every branch of me that bears not fruit, the husbandman. Isn't that what he said in that first verse? My father is the husbandman. He said, the, the, he, Every branch of me that bears not fruit, he 
the husband, the father, taketh away. Yeah. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. God, the father, is the husbandman. Yeah. Husbandman, is the, he used that term, they knew that well because most of the, the, the Jews were farmers. Yeah. They were husbandmen. Yeah. They were growers and gardeners. And so they understood exactly what he, he was uh, talking about. Yeah. The husbandman knows how to tend his plant. He cultivates the ground and he prunes the plant, pruning it. Trim, trimming it by cutting away dead and overgrown branches or stem to especially to increase fruitfulness and yeah. growth. Yeah. That's what he said he's going to do. If, if we don't bear no fruit, he said he's going to just take it away. Yeah. Why he take it away? Because it's dead. Yeah. It ain't productive. And it's, it's, it's sapping yeah. up the energy uh, the, from the, 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 the others that's yeah. trying to produce. Yeah. So you get that out the way. So he said he's going to take it away. But he could want to bring it forth fruit. He going to purge it. Yeah. He going to do some clipping and some cutting. Yeah. And sometimes that clipping and cutting don't feel good. Yeah. But we got to take it. Yeah. We got to take it because it, it's going to be for our good. Yeah. We going to feel so much better yeah. after it's over. Excuse me. In Hebrews, the fourth chapter, he said the word of God is quick and powerful yeah. and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart there's nothing about us that god can't get in there and dig out Amen. there's nothing about us that Amen. he can't fix and straighten it out yeah. he can cut it off chop it up and and we not be dead not kill yeah. us not harm us but do us good Yes, he can. Amen. Just like that, 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 that husbandman prune on that plant and cut off stuff, but he don't kill the plant. But he, he causes it to grow yeah. even more. Amen. That's what God, that's what he said his word will do for us. So God stirs up the word in us. He sends his word to us through preaching and teaching and studying to cleanse us and to purge us. In Isaiah, the fifth chapter, the fourth through the fifth verse, it said, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the walls thereof, and it shall be trodden down. That's what he did to the children of Israel because they were so contrary, wouldn't do right. They had the word of God. They had the true and living God. But when God blessed them and they went into that promised land, they started looking at the folks around them and wanting to be like them and doing all that. They didn't keep God's word. He told them how to live in the land. He told them what to do when they get over there. But they just forgot about what Amen. God said and started looking at what the other people were doing. And they, they, they didn't turn completely at first. They just started turning more and more and more. And that's where the devil deceive us. We don't want to turn at all. No, Amen. stay with God's word. Amen. Look in his word and say, wait a minute, God, what do you have to say about it? Because the devil is talking. He's talking to all of us. Amen. He's talking to us and he's lying to us. Yeah. He ain't telling us the truth. Amen. He's feeding us a bunch of lies. Yeah. And it feels like it's true, but it ain't. Amen. It seems like it's true, but it's not. Amen. No, it's not. Amen. Hallelujah. You may look at that and it may look what he's saying. It may look real, yeah. but he's lying. I remember I told my sister the devil was troubling her mind, and she said some people were saying stuff to her and doing stuff, and I said, no, nah, that's not, that's the devil. And, uh, but I read, um, I, saw, either I saw it on TV, this program where they were talking about uh, mental people, and they had created uh, this uh, reality thing, a virtual thing you put on, and you can see, it kind of helped you to see what the mental people see. It, they show it like if somebody's getting on the bus, it sure distorted, yeah. and it didn't show it right. And so mental people don't see things right. right. And they, and I, so I started telling her, yes, I know you see that. Yeah. That's what the devil is showing you. Yeah. That's not real. Yeah. That's not of God. Yeah. Now, that was a benefit to her. Yeah. That helped her. Yeah. 
because she was seeing it. That's what the devil was showing her. So the devil will show us the wrong thing. Yes. But we got to know that's not God. Yes. We got to know what's of, of God. Yes. God called Jacob out and gave him 12 sons. Yes. Those 12 became 70 by the time they went down in Egypt. Yes. And God brought them out of Egypt as a nation. It was a multitude yeah. Yeah. of them. God gave them his law, his covenant, his promise to live by. He delivered them out of Egypt, fought for them, and he gave them land and houses and vineyards that they didn't build or plant, but they didn't obey him. Amen. He sent his prophet after prophet, and they killed him. Amen. So he said in Isaiah, he said, what more could he have done? He's all, we sing that song, he's already laid the foundation. He's opened up the door and laid the foundation. What more can he do? He's, he's already shown us that he loves us. That ain't the issue. That's not the question. God has already shown us that he loved us. He loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. He's a good, good father. He's good. He loves us. But he wants us to realize that. We need him. Yeah. We need him. Yeah. We ain't going to make it without him. We can't come part of the way with him. We got to go all the way. Yeah. He wants all of us. Yeah. He don't want part of us. We can't be part-time. I heard missionary was talking about her testimony uh, about uh, loving her husband. I, all the time, I can't remember exactly the word, but I know she was talking about she didn't want to be part-time with him. So God don't want us part-time with him. It's in, in this is what I had thought about. I said, you know, um, um, I, when I was growing up, I would see men, the single women in the, in the living in the housing project, I would see men come and stay with them for a little while. Then they'd be gone for a little while. Then they come back for a little while. Then they gone for, and we can't live like that with God. Amen. We gotta be committed. So now he said, now we are cleansed through the word, which I have spoken unto you. And he said, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except ye abide in me. He said, abide in me, and I in you. One can't be done without the other. Amen. He ain't going to stay in us if we don't stay in him. Amen. We need, both of them need to be going on at the same time. Amen. He said his word. We are cleansed through the word. Amen. That's why it's important that we get the word. Amen. We don't need philosophy. Amen. We don't need this and that. We need the word of God. He left it here on record. And he, he said you're cleansed through the word. And in John 1, the first, chap, first verse and the 14th verse, he said in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Yeah. Look how much God loves us. And how important that word is to us. He yeah. took that word and wrapped it up in flesh. And he lived on this earth 33 years for our benefit. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. for him. Yeah. That was for us. We needed that. He came and lived in this yeah. old dirty, filthy yeah. world. He lived in this old sinful. Yeah. He lived in the flesh. Yeah. In, in, in the flesh. His flesh wasn't sinful. Yeah. But he lived in the flesh. Yeah. And he conquered sin. He was tempted at all points. Yeah. Just like we're tempted. Yeah. He did that for us. Yeah. So we can see. I don't care what I'm going through. Yeah. All I got to do is think about my Jesus yeah. was here. He went Boy. through this. Yeah. He knows what I'm going Going through. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He's a mighty good God. Yeah. That's how much he loves us. Yeah. He didn't have to do it, but he did. So he said to abide means to stay in his word, yeah. read his word, yeah. study the word, yeah. meditate on it, and live it yeah. by applying it to every situation yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Not part of it. Not when you go to work, you're a different person yeah. at work, and at home, you're another person. Not a, one person at the church, and then when you go home, yeah. you're another person. Yeah. Not one, one person when you're with friends that are not saved, and then oh, another person when you're with the saints. But live by it at all yeah. times. He said that 
the, in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. These are the things that God wants to be in us. He wants us to walk by these things. These things help us to live in this life. It helps us to live for him, and it helps us to live with one another. Amen. Yes, it does. He said in that fifth verse, going back to the 15th chapter, he said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch yes. and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. He's telling the disciples this. And this word was written down for us. It didn't go nowhere. Amen. It hadn't passed away. Amen. This same word goes for us, and it goes for us every day. Amen. We are free. We have a free will. We can choose what we want to do. And he's telling us now to abide in him. He tell us the benefits and the consequences. That's a good word. <laughs> he tell us the benefit and the consequences. If we obey him, if we abide in his word, how much, how much more can God do? He tells us that, but we have a free will. Everybody has a free will. I have a free will. We hear the word and we make an informed decision. He didn't leave us here to decide on something that we're not sure about we don't know about he put it everything in his word yeah. so we're making an informed decision when we hear the word and we go against it we were informed Amen. we chose not to go so we want to do it if we if you abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you look at that benefit if we walking in God's word he said we can ask what we will and it shall be done it's beneficial to be productive. It's beneficial to walk in his word. He said, we shall ask what we will, and it shall be done. Herein is my father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. He will help us just like the vine dresser wants to help that vine to be productive. And he works on that vine. And he does everything necessary to keep it productive. God will be glorified. And then we will be purged. And we will not be taken away. So my subject today is. Taken away or pur purged. I want to be purged. Yeah. I want God to work in me. Y'all be blessed. Yeah.